this video, we're going to find a trigonometric model given some data, um, and we're going to graph it to see how this all works. But in the table, given the average temperature by month for Washington, D.C., how can the temperature be modeled with a trigonometric graph? How does the midline function value compare with the average 12-month value? All right, well, let me find the average 12-month value. Let's jump straight into that part first. So the way I would find the average is I'd add all these up. So I'd do 43 plus 47 plus 56 plus 67 plus 75 plus 84 plus 88 plus 87, plus 80, plus 68, so on and so forth. I don't know why I just didn't do that before. All divided by 12, and I get the average to be roughly 67. Or yeah, 67 or 66.7. All right, so now let's look at this graphically. So let me draw a graph in here. Got a different color, use my yellow to draw the graph. We're going to draw my X and my Y's at the edge or my months and my heights at the edge. And I'm just going to do this. So this is 10, 20, 30, 40. So we're looking at 43, 47. This is month one, so that's January, month two. February 56 for March, 67 for April, 75 for May, 84 for June, 88, then 87, then 80, then 68. So 40, 50, 68, 58, and then 47. Here's my function. All right, so this can be interpreted as a cosine or it could be a phase shift sine. Again, like I've said previously, most times we do go with a sine function um, as our wave function. So I'm just gonna go with that sine. Y equals the amplitude times sine. And we're just gonna put a phase shift onto this. Um, v x minus h. Are you wrong to go with the cosine? No, you are not. If you interpret this as a cosine that is flipped across the axes, um, you're perfectly fine to continue on with the cosine. Both will yield the same results. But again, sine is the most typically used trigonometric function when making models. All right, so my amplitude, my amplitude is going to equal my max minus my min divided by two. All right, my max in this case is going to be 88 minus my min, which is 43, divided by two, which is going to be 22.5. if you can see that color. Go with this color. All right, now my B, my period here. Well, we're looking at 12 months. This is month one, this is month 12. So we're looking at my period. Remember that your period equals two pi over B, which means if we restructure this, B would equal two pi over your period. So we're looking at b is equal to 2 pi over 12, or pi over 6. Okay, next one, my h. Well, it's kind of hard to tell right now, but I can do my midline. Let's do my k. So my midline is going to be halfway between my max and my min. So looking at this, I need to find the halfway point between my max and my min. I don't know, maybe something there, but let's calculate this. So k would equal max 
plus min divided by 2. Or 88 plus 43 divided by 2. And we get something on the lines of 65.5. Looking at that, we are 40, 50, 60, we're about here. Which means that the first point for a sign that crosses that midline, that'd be the start of my wave function, this point right here, this would be my phase shift. This is how far we had to do. This is the start of the sign, because remember the sign has that kind of sideways S shape. So in this case, we're looking for a value in our chart, which is close to the 65.5. And in this case, we're roughly four months in when we hit that midline. So that's going to be my H. My H. That's the color I was just using. And that color is too dark. Do you like powder blue? H is going to be equal to the fourth month because this is the first month that we cross that midline. And this is roughly four, not exactly, because again, at four months it's 67, we're looking at 65, 66, and so it's roughly four months. So it's not going to be the exact. Okay, now let's put all these pieces together and write the function. So my function is going to equal the amplitude 22.5 times sine of my b, which is pi over 6, times x minus 4, plus 65.5. Okay, my midline being 65.5, my average being about 67. You can see that the midline's pretty close to the um, average value. Should we use the midline for average? Not really, but if you have to do just kind of a quick check, Midline is actually pretty good to use for the average. All right, guys, so this is the end of this video. If you have any questions or comments, always feel free to ask, and I will see you in the next video.